Amaryllis, hi, Lorraine, Tom, John, Alan, Lars, Iris, Bill, and Jeanette, Terry. Hey, everybody. So welcome to our webinar. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. If you can believe it or not, it is January 31st. This is the last day of January. We are just barreling through 2024. And what better time to talk about how to kickstart your next project, how to start your next book successfully. So tell us in the chat, are you currently working on a project or do you just hope that this is the year that you publish? So I know that several of you have found the chat. Thank you for that. Uh, and again, thank you for joining us. So this session will be recorded. If you have to hop out early or if you jo join late, then you can view it on our YouTube channel at lulu.com. You can find us there. Subscribe if you haven't already. And then I think that that's it. You found the chat. The Q&A tab is where you put your Q&A. Kat is joining me today, and she has been kind enough to answer your questions at the end of her presentation. So make use of that. And without further ado, I will go ahead and kick it over to Kat. But first, let me introduce our guest. So Kat Margillis is a Toronto author, book coach, and podcaster, a former journalist and content strategist for brands like Elle and Walmart. Kat now works with speakers, experts, coaches, thought leaders, and other authors as a book coach and editor, helping them to share their story and knowledge so they can inspire, educate, motivate, and empower others. Kat's book, again, Only More Like You, I love that title, it published by Rising Action, is arriving in bookstores in April 2025. She's also the host of Passion Project, a podcast about making your dreams happen. Kat lives in Toronto with her husband and four children, and you can find her at thepassionprojectpod.com and on Instagram at Kat Margillis. So Kat, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show, and I will turn it over to you. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Uh, really great to be here. So cool to see in the chat. You guys have been making on your own so far and uh, with the wonderful support here of Lulu and Chelsea. So thanks for joining us today. Um, so I see we're already spanning a bunch of different genres, but it's all good because today, whether you're writing nonfiction or fiction, there's gonna be great stuff here for you. Uh, whether you're starting a book, entering the revision phase or reaching publishing, um, I'm going to serve you as well. So um, I will just scroll down to my agenda. You guys can see a little bit about what I'm up to today. So today I'm gonna to help you gain clarity on the kind of book that you wanna write and publish and what it's gonna to take to make that happen, help you set realistic goals and expectations and keep you motivated uh, in moving through your first draft. I'm gonna share tools and uh, strategies to help you write and finish your book in your desired timeline, help you maintain momentum and get you to the finish line that much faster. I'm going to show you some ideas for how to structure your book and your outline to help make the writing process as fun and effortless as possible. And uh, who wants to write a book for nobody to read it, right? So I'm going to show you how you can start marketing your book even before you finish writing it. And I'm going to do all of this so that you can look more like this guy. Love this guy. So inspired. Always gives me so much hope. And hey, Kat, I'm sorry. I think uh, you're sharing uh, the wrong screen, I believe. Uh, we were actually lucky to see you twice, but I oh. think one of your screens should be something, maybe your slides. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> But I but what, make... how, hey, whatever, this is your time. So if you want to double down, we love this. But if you want us to see a guy that you may be referencing, I, we're not seeing him right now. Oh, you're not? Okay, and what about this guy? I just see you. I'm seeing oh, really? you twice. So you're in both screens. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, dear. That's okay. Oh, That's dear. okay. We're doing it live. Okay, great. Um. Oh, darn it. Okay, and when, if I go back to a non-image like if I go back to the agenda, does that, do you see that? So I think you may want to turn off your screen share and then cut it back on and choose uh, the screen that your slides are on. Okay, let's share it off. Okay. Yeah, there we go, okay. And We're then there. turn it back on. All right, let's see if this works again. All right, okay, perfect. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And I see some folks saying in the chat that they see everything. So we're good. Uh, okay. And yeah, I think that we're, we're back it on. It may track. happen when I switch slides. So if it happens again, we'll just keep this slide running and I'll apologize for that, you guys. 
<laughs> Perfect. All right. I'm getting a lot of yeses in the chat. So it sounds like we're good to go. Okay, great. Um, so basically, I want to keep you moving like that cat meme. You know, the one that the cat's typing like crazy and less like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. And uh, so that's what I'm here to do today. So by the end of this webinar, you're going to have the tools, mindset, and strategies to write your, with confidence and have fun and enjoy the process. You're going to have a clearer picture of your book and outline. You'll have the information you need to start moving through your first draft and keep moving no matter what life throws your way. And you're going to have some ideas around how you can start marketing your book today. So a little bit about me. I'm going to try the slide switching thing one more time. If it doesn't work, I won't do it again. Let me just see if it works. It may be a Canva glitch. How's that? Do you see that? Yep. I think it's working. Yay. Okay. Awesome. So a little bit about me. You guys know my name is Kat Margulis. I'm a longtime journalist. I've written for all the top publications magazines, newspapers, websites. Um, so I know about writing and editing and storytelling at a really high caliber. I then moved into the corporate space, creating content for businesses and consulting on content strategy for brands like Walmart. And so I know about looking at content from a business communications relationship, audience, ship, audience building standpoint, what it can do for your brand, your business, your personal brand. Um, when I turned 40, I finally started to create space in my life for my own books and passion projects. I started writing my own books. I launched my own podcast about making your dreams happen. And I also started to get into personal development and leadership development. And I'm going to share a lot of the strategies that I learned with you here today to help you moving through uh, your book. So from there, friends, family, students, you know, uh, People just started referring me um, anytime they heard somebody was writing a book or trying to work on a book or wanted to, uh, they started referring people my way and my book coaching business was born. And I've now helped many clients write, finish, publish and market their books. I love being there to hold their hand from start to finish, coach, helping them uh, write the best story that they can tell, holding them accountable to their timelines collaborating as the book evolves and guiding them through the publishing process. And of course, celebrating when the book comes out. So I do this one-on-one -on -one with my clients. And in 2023, I created a membership so I could serve and help more, more writers and authors. And as you'll see today, uh, you'll see my process that I take them through. I help them write, finish, edit, publish, and market. And I coach them from the vision stage, which is where we'll begin today, all the way through first draft and uh, encouraging them to finish and then helping them through their edits and revisions. And then again, helping them with marketing and launch, book launch strategy, which we're gonna touch on today. So I love this work. Uh, most of the people I worked with, I think all of them have become really close dear friends of mine. And um, over the course of this time, I've also been working on my own books. And as you heard my own book, uh, again, only more like you is launching in April, 2025. So I'm excited to share with you guys everything I've learned uh, on my journey. And at the end, I'll share a QR code to help you reach me if you want to stay in touch after that. And I'm offering, um, if you reach out, I'll send you a playlist of some of my favorite uh, storytelling experts, interviews I've done with them, and a guidebook to top 10 questions answered on how to write, finish, publish, and market your book. So um, those are all the things we're going to touch on. And I will begin with vision. So we'll just slide down over here. These are some of the books. Um, when it comes to vision, what I hear authors often say um, is, you know, they, they want to write a book. And so when I'm talking vision, I'm not just talking about what kind of book do you want to write or the story you want to tell. I'm talking about your why. Uh, my clients are all over the map. They are future Stephen Kings and Leanne Moriarty's. They're future Brene Browns and Tony Robbins. But what they all have in common, before they meet me anyway, is seeing their book as a standalone product. And this is a very large missed opportunity. So instead, I want to invite you to think of your book as just one of many products and services orbiting your offering. And definitely for the nonfiction folks in the audience, but also for the fiction authors uh, too. So stay with me, I'm gonna explain myself. So it's really important because in order to finish your book, um, it's gonna require an investment of time and energy. And that's the thing that authors struggle with the most. So the bigger your vision and the deeper and the more connected you are to it, uh, that's gonna keep you motivated and pushing through to the finish line. So even if you're a fiction writer, don't be afraid to dream the biggest dream that you can. 
to help you get excited and face the page day, to, day after day. So why write a book? So especially for my nonfiction authors, a book gives you authority. You know, a lot of these writers are writing because they uh, see the book um, as a way to become an expert in their space. And it does. Uh, a book is your calling card. It is your backstage pass to places, opens all kinds of doors for you. It gives you authority. It gives your uh, personal brand a boost. It builds brand awareness, business awareness, personal brand awareness. It's a great way to stand out from the crowd, uh, gain credibility, get public uh, publicity and exposure. And um, yeah, I just say it's, it's your all access pass to media coverage, podcast stages, and so much more. It's a huge piece of your content strategy and a major contributor to brand building and a significant asset for marketing and publicity. Um, so a book builds relationships. It helps you connect with new audiences. It grows a deeper relationship with your existing clients and network. Um, it helps you reach new audiences. It builds trust, connection. It's a huge part of sales and enrollment strategy, particularly for you experts and um, business owners. So it's an opportunity to let people in, to share your story and your why. You know that saying, people don't care what you know until they know why you care. And the book is an, uh, an avenue and a platform for you to share that. Uh, a book creates possibilities for additional streams of revenue. You can use your book to, yes, obviously uh, generate book sales. I was just chatting with an author yesterday and she asked me, do you think I can make any money from my book? And I said, it really depends on how you think you can make money. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's book sales, but there's so many other offshoots from the book that create additional streams of revenue. So you can use your book to also uh, revitalize sales of previous books. It's said that you don't make book money until your third book. So it's a compound effect, uh, a long game. You can use your book to sell merchandise, book related merchandise. Uh, you can sell off different iterations of your books. There's foreign rights, film rights, audiobooks. You can use your book to grow your business um, and, and turn it into extensions like courses, masterminds, workshops, future books, future coaching po programs, paid subscriptions like Substack and Patreon. And, um, and you know, largely for the, a lot of the authors that I work with, it creates paid speaking opportunities, gets you on those stages, gets you on bigger stages, more international stages. So it's also a way to promote your business, advertising free, it's actually better than advertising. And, um, really important for just about everybody these days is you can use your book as a content bank uh, to help you build and maintain relationships with your audience. So uh, you can pull from that content bank to populate your newsletter, your social media, uh, your courses and, and so much more. So uh, now that you can see all the value that a book affords and all the ways that this is a, a worthy investment of your time and energy and into yourself, how do you figure out which book to write? Yeah. Well, let me move to this one. Okay, so these are all questions I go through with my one-on-one -on -one clients. A few years ago, I hired a business coach and she walked me through a visualization and what came up for me in that time was a vision of me in a bookstore with a small group of women readers. Sorry, guys, uh, it is women's fiction. Um, I did write it for my mom, my sister, my best friends. Um, but you're welcome to read the book and, and share it with women, women in your life. But, um, you know, picturing those women and, you know, hearing them say to me that they felt seen, heard and loved like that motivated me so much through all the ups and downs. And um, it, it's a vision that still brings happy tears to my eyes. And it's what's propelled me through first draft, through publisher submissions and rejections, through revision after revision, through getting up at 5 a.m. every day. Uh, it's the moment I'm running toward even now with my publishing date set for 2025. And it's, it's just so integral that I really encourage you to do a deep dive, meditate on it, and really get a visual picture of this that you can speed dial whenever you need it for motivation. So vision is also really important. It's really important to ask yourself these questions. So 
we're clear, you know, me uh, with my one-on-one -on -one clients, or you maybe with a, a future uh, book editor or publisher, uh, we're clear and aligned on, on what you want to create so we can help it man uh, manifest on the page. It also serves as a North Star as you move through the editing process, uh, feedback, um, all of those things as you have choices to make, being able to come back to this vision and why you're doing it in the first place is really supportive. And so that you can stay true to your original vision, or maybe your vision evolves and uh, you, you get to evolve with it, but with intention. And writing can be hard. So having this vision, again, is just very motivating and um, just, it's like just this, just tapping into that will really push you through a lot of difficult moments. So right now, if you want to in the chat, feel free to share um, what's in it for you, uh, what's in it for the reader, and um, I'll get to that in a second, that's really important too, but you know, why are you doing this, why is this important, and connecting emotionally to that the vision for the book. As part of the vision, Clarity, I also like to discuss publishing path, um, so I'll just touch on that really briefly. So, you know, you've got a few main avenues, you've got traditional publishing, um, you know, where you have a traditional publisher and they move you through the editing, uh, book publishing and promotion process. Um, a few things about that is it can take years to get a book publishing deal. It takes It could take years to get an agent if it ever happens. It can take a long time to get a publishing, uh, a book deal. And um, you're looking from the moment of book deal, you're looking at, uh, you know, about 18 months plus to the bookshelf, depending on the other books and schedule that your publisher has. So for a lot of people, it, it just doesn't make sense for them to go down that avenue. But a lot of people are committed and really want to go for it. Um, and if you have a vision of being a New York Times bestseller, then you, you might want to shoot for that too. With self-publishing, the uh, benefits are instant gratification. You can book publish your book instantly at almost no cost if you choose, and you have more control, you get a bitter, bigger cut of the sales. The downside is having to figure everything out for yourself and or hire contractors to help you um, with editing, design, and marketing. So the kinds of things that a publisher would help you with. And there's a bunch of options in between, guys. So there's also small press publishing houses, and there are hybrid publishers um, that offer that service of walking you through that. So. Um, which brings me to your reader and your, your ideal audience. And so also thinking about your publishing path in terms of where is your audience. Uh, I interviewed K.A. Tucker. She's a self-published author. And she was saying that actually for self-publishing, um, romance and fantasy, more of the audience is in that space. So it actually is better for her to be a self-published author. So being mindful of where your audience is, uh, that can impact your, your publishing path decision as well. So uh, take a moment, get clear on your ideal reader. Why would they want to read this book um, and write it down? You know, take some notes uh, as, I'm, as I'm chatting or put it in the chat. What's in it for your reader? Why would they be invested in this book? And, um, and then as you think of that person, you can think about the best content strategies and book strategies to help you reach that person. So maybe they have a problem that you have a solution to. Uh, they want to lose weight and, and nothing they've tried with has worked and you have a unique answer and approach for that. Uh, maybe they're interested in your topic. My husband is a Grateful Dead fan, so he reads and, and listens to everything that has to do with the Grateful Dead. Or, like I said with Kay Tucker, that maybe they're really into the genre of romance and fantasy and, um, and, and being where they are. So it's important to get clear on your you know, why you're doing this and also who that reader is, where are they, what are they interested in? And um, even as you're writing a memoir, I saw that there's some life storytellers, which I really love. Uh, you get to ask yourself, is this scene um, I'm writing important to the overall journey for the reader? So that's why keeping the reader front and center will really serve you. So who is your ideal reader and why would they want to read your book? What's in it for them? And um, Another important question you can ask yourself just to give yourself a little bit of a boost in motivation is, why is this book important right now? Building a case for that is going to help you stay on track. Okay, right on time. So we're going to move on to story. And what's your story? So personally, I know a story is ready for me when I begin when I see a beginning, middle, and end. Until then, it's a note on my iPhone 
um, or in, you know, in my on my computer in a folder somewhere. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld has a filing cabinet where he stores all of his what he calls bits. Um, and, and I'm the same way. So until all those pieces are clicking for me, I, and I can see it as like a movie trailer in my mind. Um, I'm just kind of, you know, accumulating ideas, but I'm going to help you connect the dots today. Um, help you get clear on your book idea and what it's about and who it's for, and even why you're the person to write it. So let's talk about outline book structure. It's going to get a little hairy, I'll be honest with you, because there are some fundamental truths about story um, and the hero's journey and all that. Um, and within that, there's a lot of flex and variation between genres. So um, I'm going to share with you what I think are some fundamental truths that I think are going to help elevate your book. Um, and, you know, maybe it's going to spark an idea or maybe it's going to create a checkpoint for yourself to come back to. Um, and and see if you're you're you've you've managed to pull off these these things. So I like to look at the book as uh, a transformation. It's just, uh, a book about all books are about transformation, really. Even in the the you know whether it's memoir or it's um, self help or it's um, fiction, literary fiction, they're all about transformation. And that distills into a problem, a solution, and resolution. And so if you're writing memoir, what's the problem that you overcame? What's the struggle that you overcame? If you're an expert, what is the problem you're solving or addressing? And if you're writing fiction, what is the problem your protagonist is facing? Uh, then the solution is the lessons learned, the ways healed, the battles won. And the resolution is like, what's the result? Um, you know, what's the benefit the reader is going to have uh, after reading the story, following your life story, um, learning all your tips if it's nonfiction, you know, um, self help? And um, what is the result the protagonist achieves by the end of the novel? Uh, you can also look at it as like a before and after snapshot. Um, so hopefully, like, this is already giving you some like overarching ideas of you know, your beginning, middle and end. And it's really your through line because you may be having a lot of plot points, a lot of scenes running through your mind, especially in fiction. But keep this in mind as the through line. It's the, the drum beat. It's the heart of your story. And a lot of uh, writing courses, you know, they'll talk about um, three act structure, five act, five act structure, um, and things like that. But I'll just kind of break down some of the core core pieces. So, you know, in act one, uh, you will have an inciting incident. Uh, it's the moment that changes everything. Um, and you can think which scenes and moments are gonna bring me closer to act two. You can think about your hero's transformation story. Where does it begin? If you know how the hero will end up, what is the furthest point away from that that you can start them off on to have like the most compelling, fascinating story? And uh, you're showing that before photo, right? So you've got your before, and then you've got this crisis, and then you're moving into act two, which is uh, increasing complications for the hero. You're raising the stakes. This is happening in fiction, but it's also happening in nonfiction. Um, you're always taking your reader on a journey. and um, this is probably the longest act or part, if your book is divided into parts, parts of your book. So you're thinking about what are the challenges your hero faces that force them to change and um, challenges should get progressively worse and the stakes should be going up. Act three, there's always that big battle uh, and um, it, it may be like the, you know, if it's nonfiction, it's like the biggest lessons, the biggest takeaways, memoir, same thing too. And you're showing how the hero is changed by the end. And also think, is the end is ending satisfying? That's a great question to ask yourself. So I'm a huge fan of Save the Cat. Any Save the Cat fans? Um, I'm a big Save the Cat fa fan. And they do a great job of outlining what the final chapters of your book can look like. Um, you know, whether it's a slow burn or, you know, leaves the audience um, wanting more. So uh, 
but yeah, I think, you know, if you think about the before and after picture and then just have these increasing intense um, battles, challenges, lessons, and you're taking people on that uh, journey, then they're going to stay with you. So in the land of nonfiction, I'm just going to um, zoom in on nonfiction just a little bit more, help you guys see what that could look like. Uh, you're probably starting with an introduction again. People don't care what you know until you tell them why you care. So introducing yourself, uh, introducing yourself um, and, and building that relationship so they want to stay with you. Um, you're outlining that problem solution resolution. And there's a few different ways you can tackle it. Um, it may be like, uh, uh, you know, you've got a, a problem and then a solution, or you may group your problems and then group your solutions into different parts or acts, so to speak, acts, so to speak of your book. And um, act three would be, you know, where does a reader go from here or what happens to the person if it's a, a memoir, like what happened afterward. Um, and something I really like to call to attention is the call to action at the back of the book. And I think maybe in um, self-publishing, it's, it's probably not something that you're thinking about in fiction or nonfiction, um, but really, really important as an entrepreneur. Uh, so thinking about where are you leading your reader at the end of the book? Uh, where are you leading them after they're done reading the book? So thinking about something that you can place at the back of the book to continue the conversation, continue the relationship. Um, you might want to have what's called a reader magnet and inviting them to subscribe to your newsletter or visit your website to download a free giveaway. If it's memoir, maybe you've got a deeper dive into your story or additional photos and multimedia you want to share with them. If you're an expert, maybe it's a free download, PDF, audio, video tutorial, which can lead to workshop, you know, re retreat, paid course. And if it's fiction, it could be a bonus chapter or sample from your next book. So think about ways that you can um, bring your reader in so that they can stay with you as you move through future books and, and offers. Okay, we're gonna move on to my favorite part, which is, oh, I just wanna show you guys like a real quick glance, for, especially for the nonfiction peeps. Um, so this is my client Shannon's book. She just launched her book uh, January 15th. It's called Breaking Free. And it's uh, a book that's helping women live their best life. Um, and so the arc that she takes people's, people on is, you know, introducing herself, her story, um, letting the reader get to know her a little bit, and then talking about, you know, what are the challenges that her and her clients face? How does she move through them? And, um, and then what happens after that, after all those breakthroughs? And then she's got her call to action there, you can see. So uh, promise is the nuts and bolts. So this is my favorite part of robot creation. This is the part of the book development program uh, when I take my writers to task and ask them to put their butt on the line. And this is how we finish the book. So I call it the promise and you can do this at home. It's about getting clear on the work you're willing to do, the work you have to do. Oh, thank you so much. It's about the work you have to do and the work you're willing to do. Those are two different things. Um, and, and how does this look in very real tangible, uh, terms, even if you're writing fiction day to day, week to week. So I didn't have these tools when I started writing my book. It took me five years to write it. And I say it took me four months to finish it. That four months took place during a time when I was doing a leadership course. And it was all about setting goals and meeting them. By the time we started, I already had a first draft. Uh, I'd been working on it for five years. And um, but ever the perfectionist, I just kept tinkering and tinkering and tinkering. And I felt like it was never ready to send out. And uh, so my power group, they challenged me. They're like, this is this is gonna, this has gotta end. You gotta get this book out. And I was so scared of failing um, that I wouldn't even declare it as my my graduation goal and uh, sending it out to, Jay, to agents as my goal. Like I was like, I'm not sending it out if it's not perfect. And um, so we made a secret pact and uh, and I did meet it. So on graduation day, I did send my book out to agents. I got signed by one of my top three picks, I think almost overnight in a week or two. So the book was ready.
Um, the point being, without having clear dates and by whens, you can spend your whole life working on your book. And um, I got to interview Cecilia Ahern. She's uh, the author of P.S. I Love You. And what she said to me really stuck with me. And um, she said, uh, now I'm going to blank on it. But she said something along to the effect of, you know, I did the best I could. And being okay with that because writing uh, every day, you change and you grow and you learn something. So it's like every time you come back to that manuscript, uh, you can always work on it and make it better. And you just get to have a, you know, a, we, we want to write the best book we can, but also having kind of like um, a benchmark or a, a milestone where you're like, as good as it is at that date is, is when I'll be, you know, it gets to go out regardless because um, there is no perfect when it comes to writing books and um, we can always do better, but there's always another book. So um, I want to leave you with that. So uh, writing is hard. And so to make this as easy as possible, um, I do try to, you know, um, encourage my, my clients to take baby steps and increase in small increments. I always want them to be winning, you know what I mean? And celebrating small wins. So what this looks like is first answering some quick key questions and working around the through the questions and, and troubleshooting anything. So to begin with, start jotting down your answers to the following. So what's your desired deadline? What do you want? When do you want to finish your first draft of your manuscript? Or when do you want to finish editing your book? Or when would you like to publish the book? Um, and keep in mind that the manuscript will go through at least several edits before being self-published ideally or going out to agents for consideration i invite you to think of sending your book out to agents the same way you would as um self-publishing it and are you okay with the shape that it's in don't think that you can send us a, a fixer upper and get signed because it's not going to happen so um so building in some time there for beta readers, editors, things like that. Um, think about how many words, pages, chapters do you get to complete by then? You can look at books in your genre, um, how long are they, and, and figure that out. Next, you can think about how much time are you willing to commit to your book? You know, Do you have an hour a day, or is it 20 minutes, or is it no days but only weekends? Um, or maybe it's a writing retreat once a month. So getting really clear and honest about uh, what you're willing to commit. And also thinking about um, what challenges do you think you might face and how can you plan for them? You know, I'm a mom of four. I know how hard that is to, to work the book in. We have jobs, we have parents, we have kids. Um, and so like being realistic about that so you can properly uh, preempt it, strategize around it. Um, and so, you know, I go through all of these questions and then it's like a reality check, you know, uh, if you want the book to be done in, a, in 30 days um, and you get to create 60,000 words, well, you know, are you leaving room in your, in your calendar to accommodate that? You know, I think a nice, uh, comfortable space is 500 words a day. Um, it's about 20 minutes a day uh, or an hour a day. Uh, depending on like what you're writing, right? Because uh, if you're an expert, then you can like really go to town in a short amount of time because you're just kind of dropping everything from your mind onto the page. Fiction's a little bit harder, right? Um, but I think 500 words a day is a comfortable pace. Uh, 2,500 words a week. You know, I, I can pretty much get anybody to first draft in six months, but I've had clients write their books in 30 days. Um, and some have chosen a year long process because they they want to balance a little bit more. But these are all things that we get to explore and think about. So you can really create a practice and a regimen, block it in your calendar, and really commit to it and stick to it. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the process so you can build that into your timeline as well. And um, so steps to the publishing. So once you have a first draft, it's time to move into editing, probably beginning with uh, revising, you know, self-editing. Um, from there, you might want to bring in a professional editor, book coach, uh, feedback partners, definitely beta readers. Um, getting that feedback is so, so important. Maybe you've got a writing group and that's amazing. But yeah, having somebody read your manuscript from beginning to end, um, ideally somebody who would be like an ID, um, a target reader, like actually somebody 
that would fit the profile, the avatar of the, the, the reader that you um, built out in, in those first modules that we talked about. Um, and, and so you're, you know, once you've got a, a final uh, draft that you're really happy about, you would be moving into querying. Um, if you're gonna pitch your book to agents and publishers, if it's fiction, you're gonna need a query package. That looks like a query letter, synopsis, and uh, polished five to 20 pages of your book, depending on the agent's ask. And a nonfiction proposal is more like a 20 page brief plus sample chapters. Um, it's gonna include a market and competitive analysis, promotion and publicity plan, table of contents, chapter summaries, um, so all of those things. And if you are choosing self-publishing, think about, again, you're still gonna wanna have that editing process built in. You're gonna um, go into cover design, uh, book for formatting, uploading the book, and then having all those pieces uh, worked in before you schedule your book launch. And, um, and also make time for the book launch because that's a really big, big endeavor. I was just chatting with my client, uh, Shannon, actually the other day, she didn't realize how long things like guest posting and podcast interviews take. So um, I, I feel like you can never have enough time post book launch um, or at book launch and even afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to mastering the genre. Um, this is really important. This gives us a lot of great information. You're probably already a master of your genre. Um, and so this is an opportunity to, you know, we don't need to re reinvent the wheel. The answers are all there for all of us. It's like at your local library, it's at your local um, chapters, Indigo store. Um, so uh, I really like to talk about comparison texts with my authors, it helps me um, picture better what it is they wanna create. And it also gives us ideas uh, for what we wanna do or not do. So um, some things to ask yourself is, you know, picking some books and asking yourself like, what do you like about the book? What's working for it? What do you like about the narrator's voice style? What do you like about the format and layout of the book? What else do you admire about the book? Which of the above elements would you like to try out on your work? So, you know, you're you're looking at the book not so much as a reader, but more as a writer and editor. And these are some great questions to guide you. So I like to explore that because it gives us a lot of ideas um, and it it prompts, you know, my writers to articulate something they might not have thought um, to mention to me. And I want to create time for questions at the end, but um yeah, I'm just gonna throw in some uh, brief other considerations when it comes to writing a book, regardless of fiction or nonfiction, is um, thinking about those first pages. If you don't already know, it's like the first pages are the most important as far as hooking the reader, bringing them in, hooking the agent, the publisher, book retailers, uh, bookstore owners. Um, you know, uh, my friend, David Mark, uh, he's a, a crime uh, author, he calls it the drink dropper. Um, and, and there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, start your book off like that. You know, if it's nonfiction, it's like maybe you're coming at them um, with uh, a totally different point of view. Uh, and yeah, kind of like myth busters, uh, things like that. Um, in fiction, it's like starting your book in the middle of the action um, and just creating a lot of questions that the reader will want to dive in and explore. And also just remembering about the, the, the show don't tell rule, which is, you know, as far as like self editing and revising, you know, the more showing you can do, the less telling, the better. And, you know, try to balance it at like 80, 20, 80 showing. And, um, and thinking about like, you know, if you're, what else can I show? You know, think about setting, time, space, uh, thinking about engaging the five senses, does the character have their own distinct voice and dialogue? Something I really loved from one author that shared on Instagram and I cannot find her name. Um, I really get to credit her. I really loved how she said, you know, thinking about your secondary characters, um, like they don't know that they're not the main character of the book. And it just creates like a whole different dimension uh, to those characters and, and adds so much more texture to your book. So I really love that tip. 
Uh, is there an element of surprise in your book story? Readers really love that. And have you chosen the best point of view for your book? All right, so we're going to go into brand you and like mastering the genre, I do the same thing as far as developing author brand, um, personal brand. And so, you know, I love to take my writers through, you know, a, a tour on Instagram or TikTok or whatever social media platform they really like and explore who do they follow, who do they like, who um, inspires them. And so these are some great questions and prompts that you can ask yourself. Uh, what do you like about the brand? What do you like about their social media page feed? Uh, what elements of their brand and presentation would you like to apply to your own? What is experience you want other people to have from your brand? What do you stand for? And what can other people expect from you? What are you offering visitors to your page? Um, it's almost like having your mini magazine. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you for example. This is a little bit outdated, but if you pop onto my my Instagram, um, you know I've got three core beats. It's like mom life, books, passion project, and so anybody who's browsing, if all they saw was my kids, they probably just maybe just keep cruising. If that wasn't their, um, if they weren't into that sort of thing, or if I was just straight books um, or or straight passion projects. So this kind of speaks into all my passions and things that I want to talk about and share. And so what are the three principles of your brand? Like what are your three pillars of your brand? Having a little bit of variety to that, like articulate that for yourself so um, you can capture more audience, but also like the right audience and um, gives you more material to work with. I love it also because it creates some boundaries. You know, when I'm at choice and I'm deciding, you know, should I, should I publish this? Should I press post or send? You know, it's like, well, does this serve, you know, this audience? Does it serve what I'm doing with this platform? And I really appreciate having those boundaries. Uh, so yeah, you can use these guiding principles for your content and outreach strategy, everything from social media to blogging, to podcasting, to newsletter. Um, they're all ways to grow your audience, start seeding that content um, that's aligned with your book and start warming up your readership and your audience. And uh, yeah. Okay, great. So book marketing strategy, it's never too soon to warm up your audience, but how? So we already talked about identifying your reader. Uh, we're talking about warming up your readership, uh, your newsletter, using newsletter, social media, things like that. Something else that you can be thinking, especially as you progress closer to book launch is warming up your, uh, sorry, building your tribe. Like who are the people that are going to share uh, word of mouth about your book? Um, super fans, uh, you know, cultivating relationships with uh, media, bloggers, influencers, book reviewers. Um, you can hire a book uh, publicist and um, yeah, Facebook groups, all of those kinds of things. Um, there's also ARCs, so those are advanced re reader copies. You may decide to share that. There's some uh, platforms that assist with that. There's uh, NetGalley, uh, which is a little bit expensive, but, um, and you don't control the reviews, but still it can help get the word out. There's written word media that um, can help promote your book. And um, yeah, so you might wanna have some, some early reviewers, definitely supports you uh, when it comes to publishing your book and, and selling it on Amazon. Um, you know, really be intentional about getting those early Google uh, Amazon reviews. And um, Something else that you can think of uh, if you've been a diligent networker or you're a really great self marketer um, and have some influential friends is getting some advanced praise from your, for your book. And Shana did an amazing job of that and social proofing your book um, either inside the book um, as well as on your like author page on Goodreads and is Amazon will go a long way. So I'll try the slide, but it kind of glitched last time. But again, <laughs> there's my little kitty beam. So I hope uh, that all this has helped you um, gain clarity around your book, gain clarity around the next steps that you get to, to develop, um, uh, to move through, helps you decide about publishing path, what's the right path for you, and what, what are the steps uh, toward that, and also how you can start marketing your book like today. Um, 
And I'm going to get to your questions in a moment. So thank you guys so much. Here's a QR code. If you would like to um, stay in touch, uh, feel free to uh, click on that, capture that. And if you do, I will send you my guidebook, Top 10 Questions Answer to Writing, Selling, and uh, Publishing Your Book, as well as a playlist of interviews with storytelling experts that I really, really love. Um, and before I jump into q and I really want to prompt you guys to write down three things you're going to do and implement after today's presentation. Um, the first can be scanning that QR code and following me on Instagram, but what are your other two? So uh, is it coming up with a deadline? Is it uh, that you could work from? Is it uh, developing an outline, uh, sketching out an outline? Is it an author brand that you want to solidify and start projecting? Write it down and see what you can do in the next 14 days. Uh, but really, like, declare it and it will be done. And put it in your calendar um, because I find that when you don't, uh, they are less likely to happen. So thank you very much. Yes, awesome, Kat. Thank you so much. That was very inspiring. You had so many great tips, and I appreciate you sharing all of that wonderful information. If you have a question for Kat, drop it in the Q&A tab. Um, but I have to say, I think one of my favorite things was just the vision, starting with a compelling vision, because even though a blank page seems pretty innocent, it is quite daunting. And there are all days, well, we will all have days where you come to face it. And if you don't have that thing on the other side of what you hope to get and that really clear vision, then it makes it that much harder to, to sit down and do it. So I love that. It's a great starting point. Great. I'm so glad. Thank you. Yeah, all lots right. of questions. Yeah. All right. So I'm really just saying for a nonfiction or self-help book, would you recommend going with a publisher or self-publishing? Mm -hmm. This is a tough one. Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so, so something to be mindful of. Uh, well, like like I said, is there's a, there's a few things. So one, knowing that it can be a very long game. It it can take years to get an agent, and getting an agent, people get so hung up on getting an agent. Getting an agent does not mean you got a book deal. The book deal, okay. the agent is buying you. The agent's not buying the book. And if the book doesn't sell, the agent's like, where's your next book? Like they're not committed to the book so much. So that's not the same thing. So getting the book deal can be another few years. You might hit it at the park. But the other thing is they're really looking for platform. You know, you're competing about against Michelle Obama and um, so many celebrities and especially in the space of memoir and nonfiction. Um, so do you have a platform um, and do you have you built a case that you can sell that book to the extent that they want and need you to? So those are some considerations, but I would never kill anybody's dream. Like I am like, go for it, try it. And just, I love that we have self-publishing and that it, like, no matter what your book is going to get out there. Um, but just having like some boundaries, like, what are you okay with? I'm okay with fielding it for six months or a year. Um, but if you, if it's a book that's going to, can help you help more people, if it's a book that can help you grow your business, um, if it's going to get you on stages, then you need to think about, are you okay with this maybe taking many years and maybe not happening at all? So those are really some really um, great questions to ask yourself. Um, so the other cool thing I love about self-publishing, especially with like Lulu, is the direct sales model. So, and I do this with all my authors. I don't care like who they ultimately decide if they tr decide tr traditional publishing or um, self-publishing, but um, you know, how do you continue the relationship with your readers? Because if you self-publish to Amazon, you don't know who those people are. That's why the call to action is so important. Um, at least with Lulu, you have this mechanism in the background that whenever people are purchasing, you are capturing their emails and um, and you're hoping that they, they reach the book and they see the call to action and they act on it. But uh, I love that it's sort of built into a platform like Lulu. So I'm a big fan of finding any mechanism. So no matter what you choose, and if you end up working with traditional publishing, like what is a mechanism that you can have in place that you can grab those readers and bring them into your universe and stay on a journey with them? Like, hopefully this is a lifelong journey together. That was long yes. Well, yeah, that's the hope, right? Is having those readers that will be with you forever. And I like in the beginning, you said about making a really big vision and not being afraid to kind of shoot for the stars. But I like that, you know, you have to kind of consider what's available and what's out there. What are you OK with? But why not kind of swing for the fences and and see what you can do? And Kat and I were talking about this before we kind of went live. But 
today is such an interesting time to be uh, an author and publisher because you have so many tools available to you to make a, an ecosystem that really works for you. So thank you for that question and Kat, thanks for that answer. All right, and Nick is asking, what software do you use and what is your writing routine? Love it. Uh, I use Scrivener. I love Scrivener. Uh, first, because what I didn't share was actually I wrote the book as a screenplay first. That's how I saw it. And then I turned it into a book, which actually helped me tell a better story. Um, so Scrivener um, is just so easy to move around um, when I just have like scenes before I really know where things are landing. So I really love Scrivener. And I think it's like super, it was super affordable. I don't think they've ever charged me again, to be honest. Uh, so it's been wonderful. They have so many different tools and you know, notepads and it's, it's awesome. And, um, yeah. And, and as I move later into the process and with my, with my authors, we use uh, word doc, Google doc. Um, so I'd say those are the two main ones. Um, and then writing routine, God, that, that has changed over the years. Um, I do love consistency. Like I have some authors that are like, forget weekdays. It's it's only going to be on the weekend, but I can commit weekends. Um, but I love what happens when I work on a book every day. It sort of the subconscious starts working on it. You know what I mean? It's like it becomes this subconscious habit for my mind and my body. And it's like working when I'm not at my computer so that when I get to my computer, I have so much material to work with. So I love that. I do sprints. I didn't talk about sprints today, but I really love sprints. So, you know, I've got all these things I get to juggle and the way I've managed to pull it off is with sprints. So I'll be like, I'm going to revise my book and I'm going to give myself, um, I had to hand over my book to my publisher in October. So I think I had maybe a three month, uh, maybe it was two months, maybe less where it's like, this is the last time I get to change anything because I want to change it. And so I do the sprint and everything else kind of gets pushed to the prior periphery, including my kids. But I'm like, mommy's going to be back. I'm going to be back. <laughs> but you got for the next two months, uh, I'm going to be a little bit, you know, hands off. And so I do those kinds of sprints and see with my business, you know, I might be on a business sprint, uh, which I kind of am right now. And then, um, and then in my head, I'm like, I don't have to feel guilty or bad because I know uh, I've already blocked time off where it's like, I'm going to be focusing on my books and, and podcasts and you guys are going to see that. So mm -hmm. It's like, go lay off the business, put the pedal to the metal on the books and podcasts. So that's how I make it happen for me in my life. Yeah. Well, I like what you said about having a routine and then your mind kind of starts working on it, even on the off hours. And for anyone struggling with the routinely showing up, uh, the book by Stephen Pressfield, the war of art is such a good book about like, you know, just facing that resistance and going through it. So I love that. You know, creating that habit and that routine is so important. I just want to add one question. thing to that, which is what something I learned about leadership was when you create those deadlines um, and you become somebody who will stick to your deadlines, <laughs> um, it's like it's not negotiable. Like me, and you, you know, especially if you think you're going to go into traditional publishing, like you can't negotiate with your publisher because they've got a whole schedule that involves other authors and printers mm -hmm. and book design. You can't be like, well, book's not ready. I'm, I haven't done those edits and I, I think I'll get it to you, you know, in a couple months later. It's like these non negotiable deadlines where it's like, I don't care how I feel. It's 5 a.m., it's time for me to get up. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's just, I, I, it sucks and I don't feel like it and I'm tired, but this is not up for negotiation. Kind of like I would be with my kids. So mm -hmm. um, that's why those deadlines are so important. Yeah, no one's gonna show up and do it for you. So you gotta be there to motivate yourself. Uh, all right, and so Michelle has a couple questions that are specific to cookbooks. This one's a bit technical, but we'll see. Uh, let's yeah. see what how you'll respond to it. So should a cookbook be six year, 80 pound paper? And would you go glossy or matte? So Oof. interesting. I would have Style to work on that. Um, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. I'll say one thing about, um, we actually just had this conversation with Shannon about her cover. Um, I interviewed somebody and it was part of one of my panels. Uh, it was on a show, it was video. And he held up his book and uh, you couldn't see the book because of the reflection. And so uh, I'm mindful of that. M glossy covers pop but we live in a largely virtual world. You're taking lots of photos. So that's something that stuck with me as far as covers go, 
when you're making a choice between glossy or matte. And the rest I would defer to you, Chelsea. You probably know better. Than yeah. Mine. Well, no, that's actually a great point that the glossy, yeah, if you are showing it on a screen, it can be really hard to see. So that's a very practical. And I love, I love the matte cover. So I think it's a win-win there. Um, the 80 pound paper, I mean, it just depends on if you want that thick uh, paper, if you want something a little bit thinner, so it is really up to you. But also, you know, Kat mentioned this in her presentation, go look at other cookbooks that you like and that you want to uh, mimic or try to create something similar and see what, what their specs are and what they have going on. And that can be a really good guide for you. Um, and then another question from Michelle that sp cookbook specifically, but I think this could work for others on the call. Uh, if you want your local shops or bookstores to sell your cookbook, what are the best ways to request this? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Lulu, they, they syndicate to Ingram Sparks too, right? We do, yeah, yes, absolutely. yes. So, um, so with that, your book is going into a catalog where book owners can, uh, bookstore owners can order your book. And so from there, it's like a personal reach out uh, with, so, you know, my authors are reaching out to their local bookstores or places that they really want to be in and letting them know my book is available and you can order it from, from that catalog. So um, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Yeah. And shop local. Hopefully you're a patron of these shops and you're not just kind of going cold and asking them to sell your book. So start, start that way, support them and, and maybe they'll support you. Yeah. All right. And Rivera is saying, would YouTube reels work as an author with a pseudonym? Uh, a pseudonym, I have limitations because I can't show my appearance. So if you have a pen name, how do you have any tips for how to make kind of a YouTube or video medium work for you? Oh God, my sympathies. I, I, um, yeah, Katie Tucker, she's working on this under a pseudonym. Lots of authors do. Um, I, uh, it's so tricky because you want to have that creative freedom, but there's just so much. We live in a world where everybody wants to see everybody and have a relationship with them. So um, I even wanted to work with a pseudonym, but I'm like, how am I going to market this book with that? You know what I mean? Like, they're still going to know it's me. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's really tricky. And I, I wonder whether you need the YouTube reels, um, mm -hmm. or can it be a newsletter? There's so many ways to market your book and build relationship, a Substack, Patreon, mm -hmm. podcast, um, mm -hmm. so many, and I guess even with a YouTube reel, you can just be, I just, so I think it, I think YouTube just announced that you can publish your podcast to YouTube. So I just did mm -hmm. that this week or last week. Um, and it's just your podcast cover it's not there's no video to it yeah. and probably turn that into a reel from there so yeah there's ways that you can do that without you know showing um yourself if you don't want to um but it's always about like what is the what is the marketing um what is the um the platform that gives mm -hmm. you the most energy that you have the most fun with because it's really going to resonate for your audience if they can see that this is a joyful experience and endeavor for you so whatever feels good for you yeah, I mean, the target audience is such a crucial part of that. So doing this uh, on is, is YouTube where your audience is? And is this something you need to take on? And maybe not. But I would also say there are a ton of very successful YouTube channels that are, you know, quote unquote, faceless. You hear maybe the creator's voice or you see their content, but they don't show their face. And so, um, you know, like other examples Kat's given, maybe looking at some folks who are doing this successfully. And how could you how could you mirror that and, and make that work for you as well? All right, so I think that we are coming up to the end of the hour. Um, I think I saw one other question that I was going to try to get to. Um, so Catherine is saying, I would like to write something for children, but I would also, also would want to write a novel. Should I just stick to one genre to create a brand for myself as an author? Mm, that's such a great question. And um, I, think, uh, I think publishers would like you to stick in a lane, which is kind of like another downside about traditional publishing. Um, you know, uh, ultimately, you know, I talk about thinking about your ideal reader. I talk about your ideal audience, but ultimately for this to work, you just got to be yourself and, and just do what you're passionate about. And that's going to create what you want to create. So, uh, okay. if, if your passions are various and you feel called to write different kinds of books, then um, hopefully you create a, an audience and a readership that wants to travel with you. Um, okay. And I think that's why it's so cool today that author brand and entrepreneur is 
is really having a moment because people are really following you. And it's again, not so much book specific. Um, so that can, that could maybe really work for you at this time and in, in, in human history. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The opportunities are endless for sure. And like you said, it's it's easier now than ever to find your super fans, those people, build relationships with those people who really want, you know, to buy anything that that you're that you're creating and that your content um, is centered around. So Kat, we, we're running out of time. Uh, tell the people how to find you, how to connect with you. You've got the QR code there. Is yeah. there anything else you'd like to leave us with today? No, that was great. Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. I, I love seeing you guys in the chat. I want to read more of them. Chelsea, you guys send it to me after yeah. we're done and send it to me. Um, and I just, you know, it's awesome. You guys are going to do this and you're going to find the right readers and there's space for everybody. So there is a reader that's waiting for your book. So don't give up and, and believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, then borrow somebody else's confidence and belief in you. That's right. Imposter syndrome or whatever. Yeah. Just fake it till you make it. Yeah. And I will say one other thing. If you enjoyed this, Kat is also a speaker at CEX in May. I'm going to drop a link in. Definitely grab your tickets. It is in Ohio. So hopefully we'll see some of y'all out there. Uh, thank you everyone for choosing to spend some time with us today. I hope that you are inspired as I am and just ready to, to go forward and publish that book. Write it and publish it. Follow Kat, find her on the internet. Kat, thank you so much for your time today. And I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.